In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform aperture photometry using Astro Image J. It's important to note that before performing aperture photometry, you will need to have already calibrated the frames, i.e. perform bias and dark subtraction and flat fielding. Steps 1 to 3 that I'm going to describe only need to be carried out the very first time that you perform photometry on a given star field. After that, you can skip straight to step 4. First, you'll need to open one of the images in the set on which you wish to perform photometry. Select File Open on the main Astro Image J panel. Go to the folder that contains your calibrated images and then choose one of them. It doesn't matter which one. Now we're going to set some preferences. These will be retained, so unless you need to update them, you can skip this step in the future even if you're doing photometry on other star fields. Press the Set button on the image window, this one right here, which will bring up the Aperture Photometry Settings dialog box that you can see on the screen now. This is also in the document that I shared. Set everything as shown, the CCD gain, CCD readout noise, and CCD dark current per second settings are those appropriate for our QSI 632 CCD camera. Next, Click More Settings in this dialog box, which brings up the More Aperture Photometry Settings dialog box that you can see now. Set everything as shown, and again, this is also in the document that I shared. Click OK when you're done. If this is the first time you're performing photometry on this target, and you'll be performing photometry on it again in the future, including if you'll be performing photometry on images of the same target acquired through different filters, you can mark the target in comparison stars and then export the coordinates of the apertures into a text file that you can then import the next time that you do photometry on this target to save a lot of time and aggravation. Once you've exported the aperture list, you can skip step 1 to 3 in the future whenever you are performing photometry on the same target or targets for images acquired through the same filter and go straight to step 4. Click the button that looks like two apertures side by side on either the main panel or in the image window and that will bring up the dialog box shown below, multi-aperture measurements, and go ahead and set everything as I have them here and again this is also in the document that I shared. When you're ready, click Place Apertures to bring up the Multi-Aperture Help window. First mark the reference, or comparison star, by using the mouse to place the aperture over it and then shift left clicking it, i.e. hold down the shift key while left clicking on the star. In this case, the reference star is this one right here, Guide Star Catalog 2188-1288. So I'm going to push shift and then the left mouse button, and a magnitude entry dialog box will pop up, and then this is something you have to have looked up beforehand. The B filter magnitude for this star, this is a B filter image, is 12.57, so I'm going to go ahead and mark or enter 12.57 as its magnitude, and you should probably uncheck the open ref star in Simbad box right here if it isn't already, uh, that's to avoid having a browser tab pop up uh, that looks up the star in the Simbad database every time you click on a reference star. You probably don't want that to keep happening. So then I'll say OK. And then you can see on the image, it now says that C1, this is then comparison star 1, has a magnitude of 12.57, which is what I told it, and that there were 3.8 times 10 to the fifth counts that were uh, accumulated for this star in this exposure. After marking the comparison star, the multi-aperture help window will change so that now it says that you want to shift-click in order to mark target stars, which in Astro Image J's parlance also includes check stars as well. So in this case, the star right here, Elo Pegasi, is my target star. And so I'm going to shift left click it. And Astro Image J is now telling me that based on comparing its brightness to that of the reference or comparison star, 
its magnitude in this particular frame through the B filter was 10.513 based on it having 2.5 times 10 to the 6 counts. And then in this example, my check star is this one right here, Guide Star Catalog 2188 I will shift left click that star and learn that its magnitude on this frame through the B filter is 12.636 and that there were 3.6 times 10 to the fifth counts. When you're done marking all of your target stars, then you can hit enter by first putting the mouse cursor over the image window. And now go to the image window and choose file, export apertures to RA deck list. And then what you wanna do is save the file under a name that indicates the filter that you're using. This is a B filter image along with the names of the stars that you marked. And what you should do is to first put the name of the target star, so LOPEG in this case, and I put an underscore between the filter name B and LOPEG, followed by the name of the reference star, so that in this case is Guide Star Catalog GSC 2188-1288 underscore name of the check star GSC 2188-0700 and then I recommend also at the very front of the file name putting 00 underscore and the reason for that is that the 00 will make the RA deck files come first in file lists so that you can easily find them when you're doing photometry on the star field uh, down the road. So you'll see that that's a very useful thing. And so now you can go ahead and click Save, and you can also close the measurements window, and you can also close the image window. So we just did this for the B filter, but there's no need to repeat this whole procedure if you have images of the same star field that have been acquired through other filters. What you can do is just open the RA deck file with a text editor, so WordPad, for example, is fine on Windows, and then change the magnitude of the reference star at the end of the first line under the row that says RA deck ref star centroid magnitude. So let me show you that. I'm gonna open up the file browser and go find the file. So I'm going into my calibrated images folder and what I will do is open up that file that I just created with the text editor. And this is WordPad, for example. And you can see that there's a line under that RA deck ref star centroid magnitude line that gives the right ascension and declination of the reference star and its magnitude as being 12.57. The other two stars the magnitude is listed as 99.999, but that's just a placeholder that tells um, uh, AstroImage J to actually measure those magnitudes instead of giving them fixed values that the user has told them. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm first going to save the file uh, under another name because I don't wanna accidentally overwrite this. And so I'll say save as and I'm going to now uh, create a file for the eye filter images. And so I'm going to change the name so that it starts with 00i instead of 00b. And then I happen to know, I looked up beforehand, that the reference star's eye filter magnitude is 9.48. So I simply change 12.57 that I originally had for the B filter into 9.48. And then I can just go ahead and click Save, the floppy icon up there, because I've already changed the name of the file. Again, it's important to first change the name and then edit it so that you don't accidentally edit it, save it under the same name, and then you just destroyed your B filter file that you had created before. So then I can close this, and now I have two files that are RA deck files, one for the B filter, one for the I filter, and you can produce one of these files for all of the other filters for which you have images on which you're going to perform measurements as well. 
Once you've created a .ra deck file containing the coordinates of all the stars to be marked, use the following procedure to perform aperture photometry on the field. And again, be sure that you use the RA deck file for the B filter if you're doing photometry on B filter images and so forth. Only use the RA deck file for the I filter if you're doing photometry on I filter images. So what I want to do is open an image sequence by going to the main Astro Image J panel and choosing File, Import, Image Sequence. And then I want to click on one of the image files. It doesn't matter what filter it was taken from, uh, taken through. So I'll click a B image file there. And then a Sequence Options dialog box will pop up. So uh, go ahead and check the Use Virtual Stack box if it isn't already checked. What that tells Astro Image J to do is not to load all of the images directly into memory. Instead, just keep pulling them off the disk whenever you want to display them. The documentation implies that that slows things down a lot, but in practice, I find it actually doesn't. And uh, in fact, you are more likely to slow yourself down if you load a large number of images directly into memory. So go ahead and say Use Virtual Stack, and I also tell it to sort names numerically. Do not check the Convert to RGB box. And then now I have to tell Astro Image J uh, how to recognize the names of the image files that I actually want to load for doing photometry. So I can either use the File Names Contains box, contains box, which is what I usually use, or you could enter a pattern in the box underneath that where you could use the asterisk Wildstar character. But I find I can usually use the upper box. So let's say I wanted to do photometry on eye filter images. Then I can note that all the eye filter images start with I underscore. And so I can enter I underscore in the file names contains box. And then I hit OK. And an image window pops up that shows all of the I filter images as I scroll through it, like I'm doing right here. So all of the I filter images in that folder are now available to me in the image window. Now choose File Import Apertures from RA Decklist from the menu of the image window, like so, and navigate to the appropriate RA Deck file. So in this case, these are iFilter images. And so I want to load in the iFilter RA deck file. So I select it and click Open. And then notice what happened. It marked the comparison and target stars in pastel colors. Click the button that has a picture of two apertures on it, either in the main Astro Image J panel or on the image window. That'll bring up the multi-aperture measurements dialog that you see here. It's also in the document that I shared. Set everything as shown, except don't change last slice because that depends on the image set that you've loaded. And if you lower that value, photometry won't be done on some of the images. Similarly, leave first slice as one because otherwise it'll skip some of the first images if you were to change it to some larger value. You might have something other than use previous three apertures indicated if you marked a larger number of target stars than were done in this example, so that's okay. Once you're sure that everything is set properly, you can hit Place Apertures. After you click Place Apertures, that'll close the dialog and replace it with the multi-aperture help window, and you'll also notice that the apertures themselves on the image window change to bright colors instead of pastel colors. Move the mouse point pointer over the image window and then press Enter. And now Astro Image J will start performing photometry on all the images. As you can see here, it's tracking through them. It's moving the apertures to stay on the stars as they drift around from one image to another because uh, remember that we stored the right ascension and declination of all the stars and Astro Image J is moving the apertures to the correct right ascension and declinations on every image. 
So once it finishes, we'll get this mess of windows that we don't need that I mentioned earlier. So close the one that says main title at the top, close this one right here, and that will get rid of everything but the measurements window. If you've never done so before, choose options from the menu of this window and change file extension to .csv, comma separated values, which essentially any spreadsheet can read in and it's a text format. So you can also look at it uh, with just a text editor if you happen to want to do so. So change that to .csv and that'll become the default in the future so you won't have to do that anymore. And now you can choose file and you're going to save these measurements and you should give it a name that indicates what filter was used. So I'm going to start this with I underscore and then I'll let it say measurements and then I'm going to put in the name of the target star LOPEG and I'm also going to include the uh, reference and check stars so underscore GSC 2188-1288 was the reference star and then underscore GSC 2188-0700 was the check star. And then I'll put in what the dates were, 2018 underscore 0707 underscore 0708 underscore 0709. And then uh, I will hit save in order to save the file. And you may be thinking, man, that was an awfully long file name, but use file names like that. You'll thank yourself later when all the relevant information is right there in the file name. So at this point, you're done. Uh, you'll still need, of course, to perform photometry on images from other filters if you have other filters that you need to do photometry for. But the CSV files that you create can then be imported into Excel and use for further analysis like making plots and so on and so forth. Happy measuring!